I'll punch all the buttons. You're gonna punch all the buttons. You better punch. I'll my punch buttons. all the buttons. Punch all the Ooh. buttons. Click all the clicks. Woo! And it goes live. Boom! <laughs> Merry New Year. Just like that. And welcome to my Just whiskey day. Like your favorite that. public <laughs> access whiskey <laughs> review show, where craft whiskey is king. And tonight we have three high contenders to ring in the new year. But before we go a second further. Let's bring on the sexiest voice of intros, up to likes, comments, and subscribes <laughs> on the net today. Mike, what are you going to tell us? What are you going to tell us? The fuzzy people? little man, Peach. Hey, baby, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that there bell notification. You know how to use that finger to hit that bell notification. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. Whisper it in somebody's ear, baby. <laughs> thank you thank you and how is everyone in the chats new year thank you for being on time and early it is good to see john and john and oscar and liam uh ben you're already in here so that doesn't count um so thank you got a couple of you for being real early ben what do you how how was your new year merry happy new year to everyone out here mike and ben i haven't seen you really so how are you guys doing we're alive we survived we're here. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of scary. That's probably a good way to put it. <laughs> very, very ominous. Very ominous. We made it through without being severely hungover. So. Oh, yeah, well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> I don't believe you. I but... may have drank some Bailey's from an old shoe, but who knows? Oh, ear shoe? <laughs> old Greg shoe. Ugh. I don't know how I feel about that. Did I have an insult? An answer? <laughs> yeah. Was it was it an inorthotic with Velcro at, closure? At least I did, at least I didn't end up like Curly Jefferson. And if you know, you know. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so where do uh, where do we want to start tonight with these uh, with one of these three? Mm -hmm. Two of these people we're pretty familiar with. Starlight, I don't know if we've done a technical review of yet. I don't think we've done a Starlight before. Um, no. If I'm looking at it, just going off of proof, I'm thinking Leopold Brothers, even though it's awry. That, but, I was going to suggest that myself. Yeah. Hmm. Well, John brings up a good point. Did you, did you wear the shoe afterwards? I'm not telling all my secrets. <laughs> Now you're just a tease, and we don't like that on the show. So, But you like it after. Maybe. <laughs> so let's break out the Leopold Brothers Maryland-style rye. This one says it's barrel 162, 43%. Who has the bottle? I does. Ooh, look at that pretty little thing. And Kevin and I did this on one of the shows where we were – you guys were both gone, <clears throat> and we, we whipped this one out. We had two different barrel numbers. I can really whip um, it out. Oh, we we whipped it out and mm. whipped it all over the screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had, uh, I remember we had an interesting discussion with it because it was different. And, and I was thinking Pennsylvania rye when I was trying it. So, okay. um, which I was off and I was way off because then, because mm. I hadn't gotten into it that much. But uh, no, it's a... Uh, um, as you know, maybe I'm biased, but it came from Todd Leopold, so it kind of tastes good. Right. So, you know. Speaking of Kevin and speaking of Todd Leopold, I did get to sample the uh, collaboration with the Dickel last week. Yes. And uh, I can't wait for us to sit down at some point and go ABC with the traditional three chamber the six year, the holiday edition three chamber and the Dickel collaboration, because again, it's, it's interesting. It's unique. Uh, it's good. Um, I think it just speaks for itself. It kind of stands on its own. So I want to see Kevin's face when he may have to accept it. <laughs> I think, I think he does. That's he does. the thing. I think he does. Yeah. All right. So, um, we all know where Todd is if you watch the show. Um, he's out in Colorado. He does wonderful stuff. He's bringing back, uh, obviously, the three chambers still. He has his own malting floor. They, they do all local grain. 
Um, several other shows to watch, especially the first one he was on. I think it was about three hours and 45 minutes. Um, and mm. it has plenty more. Oh, who did what? Mm. That's interesting. A certain, a certain distiller. Yeah. yeah. Certain, yeah that. We'll just say it's a certain distiller. Yeah. I believe that. So, what are you guys getting on the nose of uh, of Leopold's Maryland style rye? It's a rye, so I'm vaguely nervous to go in in general. So. Many grain and uh, dehydrated apples. We used to snack on dehydrated apples all the time, and I'm totally getting that off of this. You know, this immediately puts me in the mind of like uh, a certain rye from Minnesota that we all enjoyed and appreciated. Uh, the Rocknar? Yep. <laughs> no, it's got Jesse, that... Jesse Ventura's right. <laughs> body rye. Hey, hey if, he, if he has one, I'll try it. I, I was thinking we'll have to do the Bradshaw Woodson. And if anyone else slides into the football whiskey review before like the Super Bowl or something, but. You know, and if you know if Jesse the Body Ventura has has a whiskey, right. I, I'm willing to taste it. <laughs> so yeah, on the nose, it really puts me in the mind of like a Midwestern style of what what I've experienced with you guys over the last two years. Um, some of the craft style rise there. It's a little bit waxy. Um, there's a little bit of note of almost like uh, furniture polish. I get just a hint there, and then you go right into some fruit, that apple note that you're talking about. I, think I get that waxiness, but the, to me, that's also part of the dehydrated apples, because they would always okay. be, they would have a little bit of a coating to them. Hmm. And a very good. faint mint. I get like, so, so here, here's where I'm going with this. The the note I'm getting from that, it just it's linseed oil. If you've ever okay. noticed, ever you know, do waxing or you know, polishing yeah. or boiling down some wood, linseed oil. Hmm. There's like an earthiness uh, on the second half of it too that I'm right. having. I can't pick if it's a spice or it's like a flat barrel. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Damn it, Todd. I don't know. <clears throat> the second two thirds for me. I start getting a little bit of a black licorice note in the backside, but there's like a neat spearmint flavor that's like almost covering that up and entirely for me. Like that's the thing co coming off the end is like this spearmint or maybe like wintergreen flavor. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, it almost feels like I just, you know, rinsed my mouth out. With something more flavorable, but I mean, it's got this like refreshing note to it, is what's yeah. popping to me right away. I, I yeah. could see if you if you give this to a big rye fan where they would not like it at all, because they would. They're probably somebody who's had a lot of the you know the the famous ninety five five rye in different different iterations from from Bullet or Dickel's previous rye or or other things. This is. It's very craft. So here, here's what I think. Uh, Alan and I had a little bit of a discussion today, too, and I completely concur and agree. I think a lot of people's uh, experience with rye stems out of MGP because mm -hmm. their rye has been sourced by so many. It's everywhere, and that's what they typically think of what rye is or what rye is supposed to be. But the more you get into craft that they're actually distilling and making their own rye, the more you get really far away from that MGP, MGP profile of, of rye. Oh, yeah. um, totally. You know, it's, it's like uh, the cream of Kentucky bottled and bond rye that we just, 
you know, just bottled here at Kentucky Artists and be getting ready to release. Don't don't go into that expecting your normal rye. It's going to be very different. It's very good. Same thing with the Leopold rye. Same thing with six and twenty. Uh, Catoctin Creek, a lot of these others that we've experienced, you know, they're a complete departure from what you think of as that big eucalyptus and dill note, that black liquors thing going on. It's not there in any of that. It's it's a very different thing. And um, if that's your thing and you like it, that's great. Fine. Enjoy that. But just understand this is this has got something really different going on. And uh, I think the Abruzzi rye is my favorite rye so far. When I see that pop up and mm-hmm. stuff, I, I really in, tend to enjoy those. High wire, it's a, that's another one. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think it's the oil content that you mm-hmm. get out of it that I think I enjoy the most. It changes the mouthfeel quite right. a bit. So, or, or same thing with Alan Solomon Scott rye that he's done. You know, that's getting in more of a sixty mm-hmm. percent rye kind of thing. But um, ah, this is. That mint, right before you go to that mint, there's a lot of floral notes for me. There's a little bit of a lavender. Um, and you get this fun kind of baking spice kick going to it. Man, there's 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 a lot of complexity. This is like becoming Todd's signature. To me, one of his signatures mm-hmm. on a lot of his whiskeys, from the bourbon to the three chamber, there's just there's a lot of complexity built into what he does. Yeah, but it's it's. I don't want to use the word subtle because I don't think that really is right. No, it's very. No. Um, it's not subtle at all. It's just that it's not an aggressive rye or an aggressive whiskey, and it's not you know what is it forty, forty three percent. So I mean it's not not forty, but it is. Um, it's incredibly easy to drink, but it is. Um, so again, I don't want to say I, I just don't want to use the word subtle, but there are there are, the flavors are not bold in there, but they very much stand out and they very much come out on their own. And I, I could totally see because this doesn't have the rye aggressiveness, how you would have some some rye people or, you know, I guess you have people who've had a lot of MGP, nothing against MGP. They make they know how to make whiskey. They know how to yep. make rye probably better than anybody. But it's a certain rye, and it's a style of rye, and a lot of people are used to having that rye. Right. But this is um, this brings out the characteristics of the rye grain and spe- and a specific style of that of the of whiskey more than um, yeah. And I, I agree with totally with Emily. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just trying to think of the right words to say because i'm getting I, i've been getting really irritated the last couple of weeks in particular seeing people's end of year things and they start talking about and they still turn their nose up about craft stuff oh it's got right. that like like saying it's craft is a bad thing oh it's got a craft nose oh it's got a craft taste like well no because you're used to having something a certain way that's like eating mcdonald's every freaking day and then you know then then you go someplace that makes a really good burger that has good grass-fed beef and you're just right. like oh this is the worst burger i've ever ever had in my life <laughs> you know yeah I, wait i am totally reusing that <laughs> because that is the way so many people think about just the word i, I almost like using the word because it pisses people off i just i'm like it if, if you can't understand that it's like people doing unique stuff, different, more interesting than what you're doing, putting in the time that people used to put in years ago with either the grain or the process, then right. I don't I don't know how I, I don't know why that's so very difficult to understand. Um, and, and you can do those on a big scale too. It's just usually you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So sorry. Personal. I didn't mean to jump on that. I have many fucking rants. No, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, John John Tingley brought up. Has anyone tried the Frey Ranch Rye? Uh, yes. I got to sample a single barrel of that over Christmas um, or right before Christmas. I think um, pretty good, mm-hmm. pretty damn good. Um, Frey Ranch. I think the the more stuff I've tried from them, especially some of the single barrels, the more and more impressed I am with what Colby's doing out there. And uh, I really like I like the rye and I like like the bourbon, but that that rye is really good. That's another one. Just got a good good signature flavor to it that uh, you're just going to have to go out and try it because it's it's a little bit different from what you normally think of as standard rye. So 
I'm going to say on, on this, I still get a little more black. For me, it's the black licorice is in there in the back half. And my usual <laughs> issue is with that. It's no, no offense, Todd. It's still very good. It's very complex, but um, that's too much for me. It was like a... You getting a? It's weird because you know, it's, it's, there's it's one of those things where you have to really respect it, even though it's like I'm not into that one flavor. But damn, you know, like the, the whole piece of art is really damn good. I'm sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. Uh, you guys getting there's a real for me right on the back going into the finish. There's a distinct caraway note. Like I mean, like I literally just bit into a caraway seed. Comes in really strong. It was throwing me off at first trying to figure out what that was, but I'm gonna have to have another sip here and try that. Didn't do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh, you're pouring more. All right, I'm gonna have to go back. I'm just pouring a touch more. Ooh, I need the freshen up there. All right. <clears throat> and then we have to see we flip on to the next one. We gotta remember the times. Um I'm excited. I thought I'll be honest. I had this on New Year's Eve, uh, or the thing we did on the 29th on a Bourbon Turntable. So if you didn't check that out, go over there. That was a really fun show. Um, after what I first had from Three Boys, the Black Rickers was like off the chart on this. Like I was afraid of it tonight. <laughs> I was. I was like afraid to go into it. It was. I'm sorry. It was, but this is that was much much better. Sorry, Anis. Sorry. <laughs> you but, are uh, you you got an affliction son i do i do <laughs> that's why i just mm. but like i said it's it's really really well put together need to lay uh, hands and have a deliverance session on you <laughs> bring out the snake handlers i was gonna say which kind of deliverance <laughs> session we're we talking about because no, no. it's not no. friday yeah, and i do not want you guys involved in either one really <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Starlight. Is anyone, is it, anyone we can got do any Starlight. information on them? Okay. I've got the Starlight also. Oh, do you? They're Indiana, right? They Indiana. Are. They're in there. They're the other Indiana distillery that I think is doing a whole bunch of uh, sourcing out to people. And as far as I recall, a massive amount of single barrel stuff. Uh, but this is a single barrel pick of, uh, of bourbon uh, from the Kansas City Bourbon and Whiskey Club. Rings in at 117 proof. Uh, four years old. Barrel number 16340. Uh, and it has the all-important tater sticker. Okay. And you can never go wrong with Randy Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to put Randy on a sticker, you're going to sell some. I think stuff. you're really, yeah, you're, you're behind it. A lot yeah. of belief. I don't know if that's good or not. And all of a sudden, my expectation level went way up. A mm. little hit of ethanol. Yep. yep. Candy corn. I want to get like a sweet corn. Mm -hmm. See, so you, you know, I, I guess is uh, kettle corn and caramel apples. Once the, once the ethanol passes. It's like there's, I, I get like a hay note, but it's not like a wet, like gross hay. It's like a f in the field hay. Right. Or grassy note. I get the caramel and the apples a bit like on the red delicious side for me. Mm. But I'm going to be honest, the ethanol is uh, taking a little time on this one. To call. Yes, it does. No waiting, going back a little bit. It's it's flatter. I'm not taking it as much of an ethanol hit, but it smells flatter going in. Later, I'm letting the nose go. More of a brown sugar. 
There's a weird candied sweetness that comes up and it's, um, I'm trying to figure out what that is. It's a weird for me, almost like the first third before I swallowed it, where I was swishing it, it felt flat across the top of my tongue. I like, I wasn't getting a lot. And then when I swallowed and let air rush in, then there was a burst of flavors at that point. Like there was some beforehand, but I don't know, like kind of standard caramel it tasted off the bat a little more barely up more right. of a barrel up front than it did more of a grain up front, which I said for like the average bourbon person, I think would probably like that. But then all of a sudden, like the black pepper and some of the other notes kind of popped once you actually let the air in. And I'm gonna have to go back, but that was just my first impression. The interesting notes coming off for me just off the, the first sip right now is more the finish. It gets into, it kind of pushes almost in a menthol territory, um, slight root beer, but with like a blend of marshmallow, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, okay. I almost want to say cream soda, but it's not really cream that, soda. That's where I was um, going. Yeah. That sweetness I'm getting, it's uh, root beer candy. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Neil, Dave, thanks for stopping in. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm enjoying the finish, the fact that it is, it's a stronger finish than probably what I've had or more recently. I don't know. I, the barrel tannins seem like they're holding on to the side of my tongue a little bit more. Yeah. It's dense. Um, it hits, it hits the palate fast. There's not much on the front end of it. And you just get this explosion of that pepper, a little bit of proof and barrel spice going on the back end. And then it fades into this long finish. The finish is what's the finish is what's great on this one. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not saying it's bad in, in other respects, but it just, it doesn't give you much, but you get this quick pop across the mm -hmm. back of the tongue. And then it just, it slides into this long finish where you get these sweet flavors, like that root beer candy, that marshmallow, stuff like that's going on. If you could have put a little bit of cardamom, a little bit of ginger spice. The root beer or marshmallow a little bit more to the front or added like a right. caramel on the front end, just something to kick off and right. solidify that front half. That if, be... Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're I think you're right on. I think what I'm expecting off the nose of this is to get more candy, more of like a corn sweetness on the front mm -hmm. of the palate. And it's just not really there. It's kind of I want to say it's thin, but it just doesn't do much on the front of the tongue. And then it just pow, just hits you right in the back of the back of the throat there. Yeah, it's it's very um um sneaky that way. Right. It seems like, oh, this is ah, this is nothing. And then yeah, then it's just all finish. I'm going to pour a little more of this one. I'm, he, he has it at home. So yeah. I think you have it there. Otherwise, maybe. <laughs> did, you, did you mark the bottles? Did you, did you bring up the back magic marker? And yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think a more, tradition, a more traditional bourbon drinker would, would find this pretty interesting. It's the finish though, because even on the finish, and I even had a little drink of water, it, there's some heat, almost like a, I don't know, there's some heat on it left over that you can tell is like a barrel note. The right. middle of my tongue almost feels like a little bit hot still, not in a bad way, but like I'm not used to be. That's what's clinging, to, you know, clinging and sticking around lately for for most of my drinks. When you pass that ethanol and bring up the front, this would be a damn impressive whiskey. I mean, it's, it's good now, but I'm like, you get past those two things and you'd be in some serious categories. I'm kind of wondering so, if this one actually, you know, we are high proof cast strength whores on here. You know, let's not play <laughs> games. Um, <laughs> there's no messing around with it. <laughs> It's 50. I'm just wondering. I'm just, yeah, this is 58.5. I'm just wondering if this one 
It's a single barrel pig. I don't know that they proofed it down any. I, you know, or if this is what it came in from the barrel, but I'm just wondering if this one needs a little water to open up a little bit more. Okay. So I just added a few drops in here. Let's see what, what happens here in a minute. I tr I tried a dash of water in the last last sip I had, so I'm curious to see what you think. Yeah. I'm gonna have one more. Thing. Pour a drop in there. I the it the so the water the water took the ethanol off the nose. I'll know. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll say that right now. That's gone. You get a little bit more of a Ooh. dusty corn note. Dead on. With There's those. a little bit more of that. Um, almost like that. You know, fresh rain on a fresh ground field kind of thing going. You're right. It goes from dusty to like a little bit more of a damp grain. Mm-hmm. There's still that corn sweetness on the back side of it. I feel like I'm getting an oatmeal now. Mm -hmm. On the nose. Ooh. Yeah, that get that. This one needs some water. I feel like it the oils on that water, it really spreads across the palate a lot more. And I'm getting more flavors up front. I'm getting a lot more vanilla. Um there's some nice corn sweetness that start to go. You don't just get that big pop of spice on the back of the tongue. It's I think yeah. this one needed. Some, I think this one really needed wow. some water. All right, I'm gonna shock one. Ben gets the first mark of the year. That uh, that was a significant difference. And I, like you said, we usually don't go down in proof very right. often. But it did. I could go for a little bit more flavor, but it does. It takes the ethanol note off, and it does bring more into that front half that felt a little muted. Right. So. Let's say maybe bringing this down to 55 or 54 might be a big enough difference. to Right. Yeah. I mean, anywhere from, I would say, yeah, 100, 105 proof, somewhere right in there. Um, maybe up to 110. I don't know. But not sure. Yeah, I added several drops. I'm not sure where this where this brought it down to exactly, but it was... Uh, that was that was a significant difference. So I think, and I think a, a significant improvement, at least for me, for my palate. It it makes the, the explosion of flavors a little more extended. Yeah, as well too. It doesn't just pop; it starts to flow a little bit more. And that finish. I mean, it still more... is like, but it's not right. like an. It's just like there's a little little way way to like get into it before it blows up. Yeah, I feel like it, it kind of distributes it across the tongue and the palate a little better. It broadens it out. Um, and I'm getting the 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 finish for me is now turning more like cream soda. Hmm. Right, I can put a little cream there. soda. I'm going to splash like some it. Maryland right in it. I like that finish. Uh oh, now we're going to actually have to start adding water to stuff when we do reviews. <laughs> It's not a bad, not a bad idea, honestly. Just for an evaluation it's not, it's not. standpoint. Ooh, <clears throat> water, vodka, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a neutral green. That's why I added a neutral green. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or well, some then. of the Lens Creek Contulia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's switch over to the single cask nation. The last one, the Balcones double barrel, four year old. Also, big beefy, sixty point nine percent. Yes, Wait, well, technically see. they yeah, call maybe. it double cast nation because they blended okay. a couple let's together. Let's see that again. Ooh. Oh, look at that! Yeah, such a pretty bottle. And and they are one thing I really love about uh, about single cast nations. A couple things they are transparent as they can be. There's only a couple times where they have not been allowed to say anything, but it was, they, uh, they, they gave them significant clues. Yes. Like they, they, they did a Lafroy bottling and they had to call it like the frog or something like that. Um, and they've done, they did it with, uh, with the old heaven Hill, but this one is distilled at Balcones aged four years in American Oak, um, from just two blend of two different casks. Cat, one cask that was distilled September 2015 and one that was distilled October 2015 bottled July of 2020 uh, one of 450 bottles they do this these wonderful charts on the back where they show all the where, how they say the 
the flavoring is on there, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, but, and I had to pull up there because the other thing that I really enjoy about them, I find it, you know, some people can be pretentious. These guys are funny, but they just have the J Peterman catalog descriptions <laughs> of their stuff. <laughs> Cause it's, they're, they're, this, these are their tasting notes. It says our tasting notes are as follows. Color is bright amber. The nose opens on charred oak and baseball cards, but those notes are soon followed by sweeter notes of honeysuckle, cinnamon, brown sugar, oatmeal, apple pie filling, and vanilla extract. The palate is delightfully spicy on entry with ground ginger and cinnamon towards the front and middle of the palate, and then ground turmeric, followed by blackstrap molasses, buttered pie crust, and more apple pie filling. The finish is pleasantly drying with wood spice, cocoa nibs, and ground gray pepper. <laughs> that's as, that's that's not as Jay Peterman as many of theirs have have, have been in the past. I was gonna say I'm like they've had one or two of those like well that's you know quality of the catalog. Yeah. They they love to use the word unctuous. <laughs> 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 Which I think I just I love it. I think it's funny. All right. And <laughs> Balcones, Waco, Texas, one of the ones we've also reviewed a couple of on here. We do think very highly of what they've been doing over the years, especially what Jared's doing now. And they're at the point where they're in a lot of stores now in a lot of states. And when they get into your area, it's usually not one bottle. It's like six. So you have an opportunity to try a lot of stuff Yeah. once yeah. it gets there. And that, in my mind, those six or eight are almost the core lineup. And then if, right. then if you know people... They can get you special bottlings like this from Single Cask Nation or other things they're doing down there. Then they're really putting the twist on the mark on what they're doing, and it is usually pretty fantastic. So. Speaking of special bottlings and uh, craft distillers, I'm going to plug this real quick. Got to pick this up for us today. So we're going to be sampling mm -hmm. through some complexity from Alan Bishop. Well, Alan, uh, apple brandy in a tequila barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, is that gonna? Are we gonna have to have like a new category next year? Because uh, next Monday is our awards show, so you have to have everything figured out by then. Right, right. But next year maybe there's a a, a separate category. I'm not ready to yeah. do brandy. I, I think we'll I, I think we'll roll this one into 2022. I think but, so. Um, yeah. Woo. Sorry, the woo was from the nose. Not that what you were saying wasn't exciting, but I got. It. Don't Not that you didn't there. excite him. Not that you didn't way. excite me on your on your own. But I'd be so disappointed with, if I didn't excite you. <laughs> with this, well, you know, I don't hire people that don't excite me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, all of a sudden, Mike and Ben both exit the show. <laughs> I say, this is where Ben says, and then he rescued her right back. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, everyone. All right. I'll get, get back in here. Hey, Steve. Steve, the, uh, the Malort McRib combo is old news. 2022 is all about the, the, the Malort and White Castle. That's where you got to go that's next, not, buddy. That's not going to be that bad. <laughs> it's not. I guarantee you think. And, in, in, okay, the caveat to that is if we're having – White Castle from a White Castle or the microwavable White Castle? If you're having okay. a microwavable White Castle, you're, I mean, part of the experience of White Castle is going there drunk. I think <laughs> this is not going drunk, but next time we get together to go on a trip, we should get White Castle immediately and then do a tasting right immediately with the White Castle. Fresh White Castle from a White Castle. We might have to broadcast from the park across the street. Right. We'll get kicked out right away. First off, they were broadcasting with our stuff, and they were drinking on the property. First of all, I'm pretty sure there's a breathalyzer administered when you enter, and if you are not legally <laughs> drunk, you're not allowed to come in and order food. Um, <laughs> so, Can we one of those hold-ons where you take the bottle and... Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep I'll give the there. swirl. <laughs> Chug that one down. Yeah. <laughs> they they ask you what you want to drink and just say 
no thanks i, I got my own here i'm good oh well, I'm, 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 I'm gonna sit here and drink it <laughs> whenever whenever i get in there that might be uh, might be where we head mitch that might be a, that might be a show mitch you're doing a really good job of selling your place mm-hmm. yep <laughs> at least ben and i have spent time with you in kentucky unlike somebody did I not share bread with him? Did we not break bread over a table? <laughs> Did we not do that? <laughs> Fuckers trying to get me in trouble all the time. <laughs> Derailing the show from Balconis's review to, to slander me. We at least got to go see where he works. <laughs> Spend yes. some quality time. That is true. All right, now that you made me feel bad for the first time in the new year. Let's get to some notes here. That's what we're here for. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> is is that on this bottle, Alan? Somewhere? Your hashtag you just threw up there. <laughs> is that what this one is? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Did he? How did Mitch get down? <laughs> Yeah, see, look what did we do? So, we, so I, I'm I'm sorry or you're welcome, whichever one right. you want. <laughs> Both. No, 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 I almost feel like I'm glad I wasn't there because I feel like I would have pushed whatever line was pushed well over the edge. Yeah. But on the nose, or you would have just pushed one of us right into one of the fermenters. Three it's stories little, down. It's a little hip action. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh shit! <laughs> it's fun. It's fun, right on. Uh, but but the thing that, that I noticed off this thing when because because I had it, I had another bottle of it, but it is mm. um, the signature Texas has been taken out of this a little bit. A little, maybe bit. a lot of it. Go That's ahead. not a good or a bad bit. thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'd say a lot of it. But still, you can tell where, I, I feel like you can still tell where it's from off the nose. Maybe not Balcones, but you can still tell it's from down there. So let's get into this. There is, I get a slight little thing of like vanilla cream coming through, but then it's just big, big dried fruit notes like um, dried apricots, dried peaches, uh, white grapes and honey, a um, mm. little bit of honeysuckle, and I get I get tobacco coming off of this big time, like uh, tobacco, you know, cured tobacco leaf leaves on the back end, right. I get charred oak and baseball cards, but those notes are soon followed by sweeter <laughs> notes of honey. <laughs> I get the when, I get when they say the, the baseball cards. Actually, there's like a little old dustiness to like the top end of the nose on it. So I get a, I, I get where they're coming from on that. Yeah. I couldn't pick if it was an apricot or a pear. There's some like you were saying, man. There's a lot of dried fruit, but there's like a there is a brighter note to it that's not quite mm -hmm. citrus that I can't take. There's a little cherry in there too, and it goes through like a a, mm. a cream note. It's almost like a. I'd almost put it in like black tart. cherry, black cherry. But I'm almost putting this in like in like in an open tart where it's like a fruit preserve on the inside. On the nose, yeah, I a little. I get a little bit like a like to make a Dutch oven cobbler. Yeah, orange marmalade and ginger. Shit, hmm. I'm surprised by the the array of smells that you're getting off this. this yeah. Is, pretty in depth off just the nose it's just a big fruit bomb i mean like at all kinds of fruit in such a good way and then you get this um 
sweet mm. tobacco note coming around and sweet. I think the tobacco big is proof. heavier. I think you get the fruit and on the back half, it's almost like the tobacco leaf rolls over the tongue yeah, and the flavors. It's more more of pipe tobacco for me. Like a sweet pipe tobacco. I see that. There's a particular there's a particular brand of chewing tobacco that this reminds me of that I had you know a few times oh, every so often. Nice. But um Lancaster. If anybody's ever had Lancaster chewing tobacco, it, it tended to be sweeter. Um almost molasses like notes on it uh than a lot of your standard chewing tobaccos. Uh but that one in particular, that's that's what this it just takes me right to that specific brand tobacco. Hmm. But I can I can also see I can also see and understand the pipe tobacco note you're getting on that too, Mike. That's you're not off at all. Yeah. For me, it's very pastry-ish on the front half where it's like you're biting through it, then you get this like the fruit flavor explosion Ben's explaining. Then I get like the tobacco note kind of rolling over the edges and kind of finishing it off between that and the fruit notes. And the finish is fairly strong. Mm -hmm. um, very clingy, still very yep. tasty. Um, even, you know, a couple minutes after, after you get done drinking it, it's still, it's still there and you can still analyze what's going on in the finish. Um, which is weird. Because a lot of times you just get the finish in the trails and you get a couple notes. This still has things going on as I'm, my mouth is watering. I'm still swallowing and things are happening again and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just stays mm -hmm. with you. That pipe tobacco, that's black Cavendish all the way. Mm -hmm. oh, Look at this. This is this is this is just absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. This cultured Kentucky gentleman, all of a sudden. <laughs> Come on, you know <laughs> I was calling out tobacco notes way before we ever got to Kentucky. <laughs> Smoke my share of pipes. Mm -hmm. um, no, but this is. Uh, I'm. I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, yeah, yeah. This is some like we say you could you could hang out with all night. This is I'm, this is gonna get set aside for <laughs> next year right away. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know how long you could really hang out with it because I think this would uh, this would remind you in a short time <laughs> that it is there and present. <laughs> well, an hour um, and a half, maybe two hours before it really uh, starts to poke at you. Depends upon how fast you drink. It is 60%. I can see what you're saying. But it doesn't... The heat from this doesn't taste like 60% <laughs> at all. I'm going to go back. <laughs> well, at least I thought that was a Dutch treat. Yeah, at least you didn't make Kim do it. Poor, so poor Kim. Responsible. <laughs> She's a saint. Yeah. Oh, she's she's beyond a saint. She's a straight goddess to deal with. Mm. Mm. <laughs> to deal with those shenanigans. Oh man. So I, I, yeah, I'm happy right here with this one. Yeah. <laughs> like the heat is just enough heat to like get you excited. You know, I like to say you wanna feel like you're drinking something. Like in a cocktail, I wanna feel like I'm drinking booze still. This makes me feel like I'm still drinking whiskey. Like you can still See, feel a little bit of heat, but it's not it's not bad. If you had to tell me there's forty there's forty to forty five percent that tastes distinctively higher proof than what this does for me. Yeah. You know, where you're getting you're like, oh that's that's not here. This is just like I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry. And, yeah, no, there's just coming that, that back in the way this proof hits and the, 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 there's that black pepper spice that kicks, but right in that, as it starts to go back into the finish there, I'm, I was getting this little funky note and I'm just trying to pick out what exactly that was finally figured out for me. It's like poblano pepper. There's this funky poblano pepper thing going on 
within the midst of all that fruit mm. and all that spice, all that pepper, you get this poblano pepper thing going and the way it just works with all of that and the tobacco, it, it just, it's, for me, it's kind of like, man, that's what kind of pulls all these things together in a way. I see what you're love, getting. It's not yeah. like a flat green pepper. There is a little bit more flavor to it and it does yeah. kind of coast through the front to the back where that happens. Damn. And that's why he has a job in the industry. <laughs> Poblano peppers. Yeah, but I mean that's that's what that's what it is. There's it's a little bit of a funkiness, a little bit of a waxiness to it, and it's got that little bit of uh, it's not just like a sweet pepper. There's a little bit of an earthiness to it too, and that gets me right in the poblano ter territory, along with that little bit of black pepper there going. But sweet. I don't know. Here's a question. And I know we're marinating, marinating the blend. Which th which one's the standout tonight? Well, take that. Le <laughs> legitimate, <laughs> legitimately, they're all good whiskeys. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have a problem with any of them. The Starlight, I do think it needs water to really open up and showcase more of what that whiskey can do. Um, the Balcon Ace is just. It's a flavor bomb, hands down. It's amazing. Um, I have no problem sitting here sipping this at 60.9%. It doesn't have the ethanol hit that the Starlight does. Uh, it's just it's just gorgeous. It's freaking gorgeous. But the Leopold, uh, mm. and you got that, you got the nuance, you got the, uh, the complexity that the Leopold brings, which I think is gorgeous. I love that rye. But if I had to pick one, I mean, man, hand me this Balcones all day long. That's just, it's just that freaking good. Mikey? Yeah, so it, the, the Leopold, well, you know, going by the levels, I, I like it. Um <laughs> But the, the Leopold, just because of the nature of it, there's no aggression to it. It's just a very nice layered thing. I could drink it more than I could drink the Starlight or the Balconis. The Starlight, yeah, yeah there's the ethanol. Um, that is That would take it away from me and overall better than the others. The Balconis is, uh, it's a treat. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. that's, that's you want to have that one. You're going to have a glass of it and you're going to enjoy every damn bit of it. The, the Leopold rye, you're going to have three or four glasses of it. <laughs> yeah. And not, and not think anything about it. I get um, it. That doesn't make one necessarily any better than the other, but it's more like, you know, sometimes you're in a mood for, I want a little bit more aggression. I want, I want something bolder. I want to sit down there and I want to know that I'm drinking a whiskey or I just want to have a very enjoyable time with flavors, you know? Balconis does offer both, but I can drink a lot more of that Maryland rye than I can of the Balconis. But um, I'd be happy if, if you said these are the only two whiskeys that you can have for, you know, for the next three months. You can only drink these two. I'd be happy yeah. with that. Yeah, completely. <laughs> Le Leopold is Leopold is let me take you out ballroom dancing and uh, Balcones is let me grab you by the throat. And uh, yeah. Like I said, it's, it still lets you know it's a whiskey, <laughs> right. you know, that you're drinking and it's like, hey, you're in for some fun tonight, you know? Right. Put on this saddle and bit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's not, no, we've had those. It's not quite that level. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's Friday night in Wisconsin. It's time right. to put on the leather. No. They don't Let me do grab that. you by the throat, the, flog in the other hand. And, wait, wait. Uh, we're, wait. We're going to have a good time and you are going to like this. <laughs> yeah. Kansas City is that wasn't aren't they like the cattle capital of the world at one point? It wasn't Wisconsin. You guys are the what? at one at one you, point, yes. Yeah, if anyone's wearing leather chaps, why, that's why they call you. it Cowtown. Yeah, see, well, just because I'm in Kentucky, Alan Bishop does not mean I'm of Kentucky. <laughs> He's um, inside Kentucky. Kentucky is not inside him. Right, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I gotta agree. I, with what Ben said, you added the water to the starlight and made it significantly better off the bat. Not bad at all. Um, just that ethanol hit up front, and like I said, that little bit where at the front where it felt like it needed a little more flavor. That extra water added a little complexity to it, helped kind of pull that pop a little more elongated through it, um, made it a little more enjoyable. 
Um, Todd's is going to be second. Sorry, black licorice for me, and that's just the way it is. Um, and Balcone, it's not my great default in this one because of the black licorice, but this, I, I like I said, I, you know, my, if someone was, if I was going to hand someone a whiskey and be like, here, what does whiskey taste like? I'm like, I'm okay with it tasting like this. Be like, here, boom. You got barrel, you got flavor, you got fruit, you got all sorts of things going on, and it's still, it can, it's still nuanced, but it seems a little more, I don't want to say manly, but less, it, I don't know, it's, it seems like it's got a little more aggression to it overall, you know, or mm. I don't want to get into manly versus feminine qualities in a whiskey, but it's, right. it seems like it, yeah. It's got a little more uh, Clint Eastwood character to it. Like, get off my lawn. Yep. <laughs> so, so it's more of a Grand Torino. Than, Grand Torino, uh, get off my every lawn. Which way to <laughs> okay, so let me throw this out because we we we've not done this before. But uh, here is the blend. See if this changes your opinion. Uh, this was like forty bucks, forty ish dollars. Right. This single barrel pick was 55. And this, although it's single cast nation, which you know, get it if you can, whatever, that was 85. Does that change your opinion about any of them? It doesn't. I mean, it surprises me with what they were putting out with Leopold at that point. But did you get the bottle before three chamber or after three chamber? This was before. My thought is maybe everything went up 10 bucks. Like when we said Rua can go up 20 Probably. bucks and it did, and it was like, you should have said shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just, just right there, straight up, give me the, give me the Maryland rye at 40 bucks. Yeah. That's your best bet off the bat. It's not. Cause that I'm going to reach for more often. And you're going to go through it. Yeah, you know, like you you basically paid two for one for that. So yeah, yeah. the balcones is not your everyday sipper kind of thing. Now, if that's your thing, sure, fine. But for me, that's not what I'm going to sit down every day and want to have a pour of kind of thing. No. I'd definitely be enjoying that rye for sure. And, and and knowing what you need to do with the starlight at did you say fifty bucks? 55. 55. That's not bad. If you know you have to right. add a couple of drops. Like one, no, for, you know, like, for a cast strength single barrel pick, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. And like I said, knowing it's like bloop, bloop, and all of a sudden you, it opens up and you can, it's knowing it's one you can play with. You know, like when I first had uh, Abelor Abanon, it's like you started dropping a couple of drops. You're like, holy shit, people aren't lying. This can really change things. Like, right. I already feel like that with a couple of, a drop or two is enough to be like, well, this is one to, to play with. You know, this bottle is going to be fun to, to, to mix around with and get in, get fake scientific. Like, right. Yeah. Okay. So who's got the blend working? Just took a sip. Mm. The eth the kind of ethanol. -y. For me, maybe I have a little more of the starlight in it, but. Hmm. Mine got kind of lemon pledgy and a little extra waxy. Then there's baking spice, pepper. I lost a great finish, whatever there was between the two of them. I don't get, I'm not, I don't have any good finish on this. I don't, I don't feel like I have a much flavor sticking around. Not that it's bad, but like it, it's fucking gone. The flavors stack up again on the back of the palate. The front to mid is a little bit thin, but you, you get a little bit more than what the Huber alone, what the Starlight alone was giving you. I don't feel like the finish is like, is everything. Or it, it, yeah, it kind of, I don't know, it tamped it down just a little bit. It's still good. I'm just getting more spice on the finish. I'm not getting as much of the fruit or like the cream soda that I got from the, uh, from the Starlight. It's not bad. It's like, it's not, the flavors here aren't fighting each other. They're not 
kind of working against like we do, we get with some blends. I mean, it's like if you fix this up and served it, yeah, it, it's fine. It, it works, but mm-hmm. I'll take the individual whiskeys over the over yeah. the blend. Yeah. So that's what my blend's been sitting for an hour. Yeah. And it is the, the finish. You say the, the, the finish gets it's dry and then and then spicy. Yeah. It's 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 drying in this boy. And what it reminds me of, because I, I got flavor, I got that a heavy root beer on it and then it got spice and then it got dry and then spicy and kind of what it reminded me like is, is if you've ever had um had like jalapeno poppers and then and then have like a sip of root beer okay because then you know then you just you get all that the sugar on top of that um it it's it's not something that i do a lot you know but but it it reminds me it's like okay i get that it's that that root beer cola sassafras with the spice and then you're just left with the spice at the end because everything washes down. You know so, what you you said you said the magic word sugar and that for me just nailed down what this whole finish. It's sugar sweet and at the same time it's tannic dry, and it's yeah. not a combination that I'm really a fan of. That's the way this is playing around him. Yeah. When you went to tannic dry, I was saying he was describing that like I'm getting that on the top of my tongue, but on the bottom, it's almost like there's a salt line, like. There is that tan is like a tannic line where it's like distinctively different in flavor profile. Like, and it's almost hard to get right. rid of. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's good. Not the best blend I've had. Right. No, but I did. I don't know between the Balconis and I, the other ones just had such a bolder finish that clung and held on. I, feel, I don't yeah. know. I feel like that with, uh, wood from the starlight just, I don't know what the fuck happened to it. Right. Like, I was expecting a little bit of that to, you know, to hang on, and it didn't. So, I don't know. Maybe it was in my mixture, but still. Weird. Mm. All right. I don't know. I like that. I, I think all three were, you know, pretty decent, decent choices. I wouldn't shy away from anybody because of what we tried this evening. You know? I think I think it no. more proved. I think it more proved. Go out, yep. take a look and see see what you get. Um, I know Starlight has a lot of other uh, finishing barrels and stuff they're doing too. They're, like you said, they were putting out a lot of single barrels and group picks and stuff. They reminded me of like what Driftless Glen was doing, kind of towards the end of last year, where I was like, well, everywhere you look, there's they're kind of little all over and stuff. At the right. Point. So yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, before we forget, which I know we'll mention it. Are you sure? Oh. For, for next week. It is. Here we go. Because we have our categories. Yeah, we do uh, have the categories. <clears throat> I think strong. I have everything figured out. There. Ben, how are you feeling? I'm getting there. There's a couple of categories I want to kind of revisit and work through this week, but I think I'm pretty close on, on my picks for, for everything. Uh, I'm going to feel pretty safe by Friday, but there's still going to be like two or three that I'm going to be huh, scrambling for at the end. I can, I, I can feel it, I can feel it. but uh, that's a good thing. If you're, if you're having issues like that, I think right. with some of the categories. I have it, so but uh, yeah, yeah, stop in next Monday. It's going to be outstanding. We're going to be handling awards. We're going to try to move at a decent pace with how many how many things we're going over. Um, but it's you know, like I said, this is our hats off to people who are doing a good job. So yeah. stop in and see who you think we're who we recommend basically. And then I think you know if we find some whiskeys of the year in here. Maybe we should send them out to people and see what and put them up against what they think their whiskey of the year was. Right. Just saying. What kind? What kind of people are you talking about here? Maybe other reviewers. Oh. oh maybe other tubers. Just a thought with, with with what they thought it was versus a, a separate lineup. Entirely. Let's say so. So so anything we suggest is going to go up against Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. <laughs> and well, yes. And, and Jack and Daniels that, single barrel, and, and, yeah, and that, that's that, not that, a bad that new choice. Jack Daniels release, no, nope, nothing wrong with Jack. But uh, okay, just a yeah. thought, just a thought. Weller foolproof, Weller single barrel, okay, Weller, 
I, I'm, I'm going to say the Wellers and, and the Blantons would get, would get boot stomped. Um, some of your other ones have a pretty decent fighting chance, uh, just in general. And just respect. To yeah. Some of those. Some of those people put out every now and then. So, but uh, and if you like Weller, I'm sorry, but it's not. It, it, it boots you know, down. you know, this is this is not <laughs> meant to sound shitty, but it would be interesting <laughs> to have a category of best use of MGP ninety five five rye. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know what I mean? Because there's there's because there's people that just take it and bottle it. There's people That's that true. do stuff with it. Right, that's you know, true. You, you got you got somebody like like Jason Bronner who's who's uh, who's doing the Lord's work with his rye <laughs> and, and that bourbon. Uh, yeah, he's some great stuff with that. That may be some of the best use I've come across of it so far. Yeah, I mean, there's one or two other ones, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, when you start when people start torquing on it and putting their own intentionally getting it to put their own imprint on. You know, as part of the process, it is important really going here. These are just to get us from A to B. Fuck that. This is a, right. you know, like respect what I'm doing off the bat. And, you know, you're going to respect what they're doing afterwards. Yeah. Know? So, <clears throat> or it just gets you that much more excited. You know what I mean? If someone's, there's some, I don't know what it is. There's some, I went to the store this weekend. There's some place called, I think it's Ezekiel Grains that is in Wisconsin. I didn't know Peep. And there was like three bottles of it out on the shelf. And I'm like, who are they? Two of them like source picks. And one was like a light whiskey that they did. And I was like, well, this seems interesting. You know, I'm like, so <clears throat> may do a little research there and maybe snag one of the bottles to see, you know, see where they are on their choices. You know, if someone's picking out good stuff, you hope they're producing it or they will, you know, right. or, or, or will hold on to it until it's worth releasing, you know. Yeah. So, and but source away, you know, there, you, you, everybody's got to do it somehow. Just be honest about it and maybe you're doing something unique, you know. Right. And if you are, good on you. Respect the industrial corporate distillate, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's not a bad category. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking if I sourced MGP, I might put that on the label. Yeah. <laughs> respect, respect the corporate industrial discourse. There's, yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no shame. There's no shame there. They make good Bow rye. They know how to make rye. They're good. Bow to your overlord. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let you folks go. I think we're an hour in. Whiskey Crusaders is up. I don't know if Whis yeah. uh, Hood Sommelier is going on, but they usually in uh, single I don't believe stop. so. Not he's season. traveling. Oh, he's, he's in Ireland. Up. Well, that sneaky son of a bitch. Yeah, he's visiting for him. fine distilleries over there. But good for him. Yeah. So, but exactly. go check out both those channels. So, uh, but definitely stop out next uh, Monday. We'll be going over some of the some of the best whiskey in America or best whiskey that America has to offer. In our opinion. Yeah. <laughs> that we tasted last right. year. Which is, which is probably <laughs> right. <laughs> it was 90% right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably wrong, but that's okay. No. So uh, cheers to everyone out in the chat. Thanks for stopping in. We really appreciate it. And like I said, stop in next week. Uh, I'm going to be kind of maybe a little more high energy for that. Pretty wound up about that show. Um, I we need not, to coordinate our headgear. For that. That's true. That's true. We don't, we don't all want to be off. Look like a tuna chucker right now. That's not good. You know, you know, like the, the work in Washington and stuff on the wharf where you got the tuna chucker hats on. Right. In the morning. Oh, chucker with a CH. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tuna chucker. I don't know about a tuna chucker, but yeah, chucker. <laughs> You're tossing the fish, you dirty mind, Mike. We'll kick it on off on that. So, uh, grab a glass for a toast, or grab a bottle for a bottle pull, whatever you feel like this evening, wherever you're at. We encourage both. So, cheers, everyone out there. We will see you next week. Have a cheers. good evening. Cheers. <laughs>